Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you guys how I installed this portable solar panel on my Toyota 4Runner. So some of you guys already know I have a Dometic fridge that I run in my 4Runner pretty much full time and I've been pretty paranoid whenever I go out with it because it does kick on a lot more often now. So I wanted to make sure that I had a backup system like a solar panel just in case I'm out and about for long periods of time. Now whenever I get home I do plug this into the wall but there has been occasions where I forgot. Now the fridge does have a safety where it will cut the power if the battery drops to a certain point and it has done that a couple times when I forget to plug it in when I get home. So I don't want that to happen when I'm out and about and I want to make sure that I actually have a power source if I ever go to the beach or go to the dunes or just go off-roading and we want to just hang out in a certain spot for a couple hours. So you guys can already see I already have it installed but I wanted to show you guys the whole process so stay tuned. I'm going to show you guys exactly how I did it, how I ran the wires and what you need to do if you want to get a solar panel set up for your vehicle. Let's get into the video. All right guys here's the unit. This is a Renology 100 watt solar panel kit it comes with the uh, PWM charge controller and it comes with these alligator clips that's already fused and basically you just clip this on the battery and then just put this out in the sun and it'll give you a charge it is compatible with uh, lead acid batteries and flooded batteries as well as AGM and all the other stuff most likely if you're just using this for a car battery like I am it's a flooded battery so this should be compatible and you can see here it has a quick disconnect for the uh, solar panel it's just an mc4 connector and it comes off pretty easily so this thing is pretty much ready to go as is you don't really have to do much just plug it in and set it up and stick it on top of the car or on the hood or something and you should get a charge now this solar panel doesn't actually have any feet in the back which is kind of a bummer but it does have these little loops that you can use to kind of uh, hang it off, you know, something. If you uh, got something to hang off with, I'll show you guys that later. All right, guys, we're at the uh, workbench over here. You can see I've got a snake to uh, snake the wire through the firewall. And you can see here I'm using my wire connector kit again. We're probably gonna be using these butt connectors and also some of the uh, ring terminals to get a good connection to the battery. We'll need a flathead screwdriver as well, as well as a couple miscellaneous things. Um, I have a punch here that I'm planning on using to punch a hole through the uh, rubber grommet. And then maybe use one of these tools to kind of open up the hole a little bit. I also have some electrical tape here that we're going to be using with the snake to tie the wire to it so we can run it through the firewall. I have some Velcro that I'm going to use to attach the uh, solar charge controller. I haven't really decided if I'm going to permanently use that PWM controller yet um, so I want to have the option to remove it and upgrade down the road to you know maybe an MPPT solar charge controller and then over here I have a whole bunch of wire that I'm going to be using it's basically two wires inside of this round tubing so should work well the thickness is pretty much the same as what came with the solar panel kit so I don't foresee a problem I am extending the wire quite a bit, but that solar panel only generates about six amps. So I think we should be okay with this. And then one thing I forgot to mention is we also need the wire crimper tool to crimp everything, as well as a heat gun. And we also need a Dremel tool. And you can see I have those tools right up there hanging on top. So since we're gonna be running the wire to the roof of the uh, Forerunner, we're gonna need some silicone to make sure that water doesn't get into the uh, truck and ruin the headliner. All right, I wanna show you guys what I plan on doing. So I've already disconnected the solar panel here. This is where the solar panel normally connects. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to extend this wire all the way through to the back of the forerunner. I want it all the way in the back where the tailgate is. And then this wire here that goes to the battery, we're gonna you know, cut it off and run it all the way over there to the other side. So somewhere over there. And then this box is probably just gonna mount right here. And I think that's all we're gonna have to do in this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. And maybe I'll leave this or disconnect it, we'll see. 
but we're gonna see if I can run a wire through the firewall first. All right, we're on the passenger side firewall here. Let me show you guys really quick what I'm talking about. Um, so right down there, you can see there is a grommet. There's actually two grommets. So you can see there's one right here and then there's one down here. So what I'm gonna do is poke a hole right in there, right above where all the wires are going in. And I'm gonna fish my fishing uh, snake through there. And then I'm gonna go into the vehicle and see if I can find it down there. All right guys, first thing I'm gonna do is see if I can poke a hole using this center punch. It's got a sharp tip on the end. I wanna make sure that I can get a wire through before I do anything else. So let me go ahead and do that. Now you guys aren't gonna be able to see this because there's not a whole lot of room in here, but just remember earlier I mentioned that bottom grommet. We're gonna go right above all the wires and we're just gonna poke a hole into the other side. So you can see here, I just pushed in and it already went through. And I'm gonna push it in a little bit more and twist it to make the hole a little bit bigger. So you can see here on the tool itself, it's a little bit uh, rough right here. It's kind of like a tire patch when you stick it in and you rotate it. So hopefully that's enough. I'm just gonna use this and see if I can get the snake through now. So I'm just gonna fish my wire down through there and I'll show you guys what it looks like um, after, once I get it through, assuming I can get it through. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it's already in there. So I'm gonna see if I can go as far as I can. All right, looks like I already hit something. I'll pull it back a little bit and see if I can find the wire. All right, so the good news is I found the wire. It's actually right there where the kick panel is, so that's good. It's a little stuck in there right now, so I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. But let me show you guys close up of what that looks like. All right, so you can see that bottom grommet down there. You can see the wire snake is there. I'm moving it right now. It's on the top of that, uh, the wire. So that's it, that's all you gotta do. And then what we're gonna do is run the other wire on the other side, tie it to the uh, snake, and then pull it out this way. All right, you guys, we are inside the truck and you can see there's the other end of that wire. It helps to have two people because it kind of gets stuck behind this thing. I had to pull it up and bring it back out. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this uh, wire to the end of that and then fish it through to the front. All right, guys, got it all taped up. We're gonna pull it through now and uh, see if it comes out the other end. All right, that was pretty easy. Now we don't need that much, so don't pull too much. Because remember this side is gonna go to the box right here. All right, you guys got the snake off, stripped a little bit of wire off. This is what we're gonna run into the box. What I wanna do now is take apart everything and then mount the box. Oh, don't lose that. We're still gonna need this for the other end. The box is labeled, so you don't have to remember where everything goes. So the box does come with Velcro on the back already. So I'm planning on just using the other side of the Velcro and getting a decent connection here. All right, make sure you clean the surface with alcohol or something. That way you don't lose your box in the engine bay. <laughs> That'd be bad. So we're gonna go ahead and just stick this on there now. This is the removable kind, so. Like I said, I might upgrade this box to an MPP4. And what that means is it's gonna give me more efficiency out of the solar panel. This thing loses some of the amps that's generated by the solar panel, but I'm only powering a fridge, so it should be sufficient. I think right around there is good. Just kind of hold it there for a little bit. All right, now what we gotta do is just route this wire to there and connect it. And then we'll do the other wire next. So I'm gonna be using black for negative and white for positive. All right, got the, both of those wires in. All right guys, next thing we're gonna do is get the battery wire situated. So I'm just going behind the fuse box 
under all the bolts. I think that should do. And then I think I'll just run it along here. That's it. Just leave these here for now. All right, we got the wires over here. We're just gonna connect the positive to the positive now and negative to negative. And then these other two are actually for the, for a light bulb. You can plug it in here. We're not gonna be using that. All right, you guys, wanted to show you guys the progress. So I did get a little OCD and rerouted the wire underneath. You can see I zip tied it right here for the wire coming from the firewall. And then over here, um, it's zip tied to this bracket. And then right here, it's zip tied to this existing electrical wire loom. I didn't want to hook, hook it up to the hose in case I needed to remove it. And then back here, it just routes down. You can see it. And then it just travels down here with all the other wires. And so we're right here now. So let's go ahead and get this wired up. We're just gonna snip it off and then we're gonna use these ring terminals to get it connected. Okay, so this one's just gonna be cut pretty much right there. Give it a little bit of wiggle room. Don't need that no more. This one, I still want to keep the fuse. Once this is connected, it's going to go like this to there. So maybe just right here. Let's take the fuse out for now. Oh, wow, this fuse is tight. All right, guys, we're all buttoned up. I put the uh, positive on the positive post here and I put the negative on the negative. I left the fuse out for now until I finish everything. So I think we are pretty much done inside the engine bay here. We've got everything connected you know, from the battery all the way around to the charge controller and then the charge controller we're going to be extending that to the solar panel. Now one thing I've been considering is instead of wiring it directly to the battery I don't know why I did this. I should have put it to the fuse block and just use one of these slots. So I'll probably change that. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that, that the final product is probably not gonna be here. It's probably gonna go back over here. That way I can disconnect it if I need to. And then all the fuses will be the same size. I noticed that the fuse on this is a smaller one. And if it were to blow for whatever reason, I won't have a replacement. So I'm gonna wire it to here. And if you guys know anything about solar panels, um, even for homes, uh, everything is wired to the box and to a breaker in the box and so all the power is being fed through a single uh, circuit so I'm gonna do the same thing I'll probably just put it over here and call it solar panel or something day two all right you guys I had to call it quits last night but today we're gonna finish up the wiring hopefully we got the panels off and I think what I'm gonna do is run it along the bottom and then back to the top now I'm not gonna show you guys full details if you're interested in knowing how to do all this and running it to the back I have another video where I ran my own cigarette outlet uh, for my fridge all the way back there. So it's basically the same thing. So I'm just gonna speed through it, but basically you take off the panels and then you go to the back and we're gonna fish it up the top. All right guys, here's where we're at. Got the wire ran all the way back here. Like I said, if you wanna know more about this, check out my other video, but you can basically put it under the existing wire, all these little brackets in here. So right now, what I need to do is get it up here and it's gonna end up somewhere right here. So I'm gonna have to pull this whole panel off somehow, or maybe I'll have enough room without having to take all this stuff out and then fish it to the top. And you'll see right up here, there is a end cap. And right under here, if I can take this off, is access to the inside. And there's a little, it's supposed to be a for a screw. And I'll show you guys that in a second when I get that off. All right, you guys, I was able to get it off. It was a pain, but see this right here? This is like a uh, anchor point for a screw and it's already you know, sealed up with goop so that no water gets in. 
but we're going to take this out and then that'll give us access to the inside of the headliner and then we're going to fish the rest of the wire down to this guy so all right guys we're up here on the roof so this is the guy we're after and we're going to try to remove it with a razor blade i think so most likely uh, this other piece is going to fall inside the headliner so just make sure you find it because it will make a lot of noise if uh, you leave it in there. <sighs> Helps if the blade is sharp. So if you got a brand new blade, now's the time to use one. You're just trying to get the top off so that way the bottom piece will fall through. So there you go. Let's see if I can pull it through now. We're gonna have to find this guy later. I don't think it's gonna come out this way. Well, there it goes, inside somewhere. We'll look for that later. But you can see here, now we have a hole and we're gonna fish our wire through here. And then for the cap, the cap is gonna get in the way of the wire. So we're gonna dremel a hole so that way the wire can come out. But we'll worry about that later. All right, you guys, I had to take everything out, unfortunately. Uh, well, at least the fridge anyways. Um, I was able to find this guy here. I just kept tapping this and it eventually just fell out. So just keep hitting it until this thing kind of don't leave it in there. It's going to make a ruckus in there. Now I'm going to fish the wire through. Got my wire snake here and I'm going to feed it through the top and then get it inside so that I can fish the wire up, back up. So you can see there, it didn't take much. Make sure you don't scratch your tent. All right guys, got the wire pretty much wired through here, up to there, over to here. And I'm gonna tie it up and pull it through the top now. All right guys, quick update. I could not fish this wire through with that wire snake because it was too big, couldn't come out. So what I'm gonna try to do is try to jam this end in there. And it's just spare wire. That way uh, it has the same diameter and see if I can get it out that way. If not, I'm gonna be really screwed here. All right, that is much better. All right, you guys finally got that wire through and I trimmed it down a little bit to what I want. Just want a little bit hanging out here. We're also gonna be adding on this end of it as well to here, so it's gonna be a little bit longer. So all we're gonna do now is connect these together using these butt connectors. Then we'll be able to plug in our solar panel up. All right, guys, we're all done here. We're going to heat this up and plug it in and drive it out into the sun. Daddy! Hmm? So I'll come in the backyard. Um, I need you to fill up the water. Just wait a second, okay? Five minutes. All right, we should be good to go. Six and a half hours later. All right, guys, got the uh, connector all heat shrunk and everything is good to go. The next thing I want to work on is filling up this hole and cutting out that piece of plastic. So you can see here, I've already gone and marked what I need to cut out. And unfortunately my tab broke here. So hopefully this thing doesn't go flying on the freeway. Maybe I'll silicone it down, I don't know yet. But I'm gonna Dremel this out so that way it fits on top. And then we're gonna be using this black RTV silicone to kind of waterproof things. All right, so I'm just using this rough bit and I'm just gonna grind away at it slowly. See how it goes. Well, I've already done this before, so I know it works. All right, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but should do. Let's give her a test fit and see if it works. Well, I went too far to the right, but, and this thing doesn't really hold anymore, so I think I'm gonna have to find a new cap, guys. Kind of bummer that this tab broke off. All right, you guys, we're up here on the roof and we're gonna go ahead and start silicone. Just using, like I said, this black silicone RTV. And I've already tied this line straight up. That way it doesn't move while this thing is drying overnight. Now this thing gets pretty messy, so make sure you guys have a lot of napkins or rags around so you can wipe your hands free. 
and wear some gloves. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and just add a whole bunch in here and make sure you do enough because you don't want this thing to leak. And make sure you don't put it into the uh, headliner area. I mean, you could, it's not really gonna matter much. It's gonna be a messy job, so. You might wanna do two layers if you're really paranoid. I guess if your truck is uh, parked outside, yeah, you might wanna make sure that you do a good job here because you don't wanna wake up to a wet headliner. That'd be a bad day. So like I said, this is pretty messy. I have rags ready and clean up the excess as best you can. I mean, especially in places that you care about. You can also clean it afterwards with a razor blade. It's pretty easy. All right guys, we're just gonna let this dry overnight now and check back on it tomorrow. And it should be nice and a little bit flexible still. I'm gonna plug the solar panel in and do some checks when the sun is out. Day three. All right, you guys, it's a new day and I wanted to show you guys uh, what I did to the solar panel. I mentioned earlier that I was thinking about moving the solar panel charge to the Blue C circuit here. And you can see I added a new circuit called solar. I just connected the wire to here and the ground to here. So I wanted to show you guys that. I just removed it from here. And it seems to still be functioning properly. Uh, the gauge is still on over there. But let's go ahead and pull this truck outside and test out the solar panel and see what kind of amperage we're getting. All right, you guys, you can see here, everything is pretty much dried. Solar panel is plugged in and you can see the solar panels on top. The sun isn't at the highest point yet, but we should still get a charge. It's about 9 a.m. right now and it's relatively cool outside still. And down here on the solar charger, you can see we have no errors. We're at 13.3 volts. Uh, it looks like we're at 77% capacity on the battery. 31 degrees Celsius on the solar panel. So everything looks like it's working fine. You can see on the bottom left of the uh, solar charge controller, it actually has a solar panel icon now that points to the battery. So, so that means that it's uh, charging the battery. So let's go ahead and hook up that clamp meter and see how many amps we're actually getting from the solar panel. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and check out how many amps we're actually getting from that solar panel. I've already zeroed it out and set it to amps on the DC setting. So we're gonna go ahead and just put it on here because this is the only thing that's probably running right now. So the fridge is not on and it looks like we're generating, let me see, we're actually generating 3.25 amps right now. I imagine this number is gonna be a lot bigger when we get to noon, but so far three amps is not bad. All right guys, I wanted to show you guys something really quick that I just tested. You actually don't even need to wait till noon. So all I did was tilted the solar panel towards the sun and you can see I'm now generating 4.94 amps. So I'm getting pretty close to the maximum capacity for this uh, solar panel and solar charge controller. So I'm pretty happy about that. And at 4.95 amps, I should have no problems powering my refrigerator. My refrigerator only draws about four amps or 4.5 amps or something like that. And it doesn't run continuously. So this should be no problems when I'm out on the trail, park somewhere, camping or staying stationary. I don't have to worry about my battery dying from the refrigerator anymore. One nice thing about that portable panel is that I have the option to pretty much put it wherever I want. I can leave it on the roof, I can hang it off to the side, I can hang it off to the back. But that's kind of the nice thing about the flexibility of that panel. It also has those little loops on there that I can use to hang it off the side really easily. Now, like I mentioned, I might be looking for a new panel to permanently mount it on top of the rifle box if I can find one. Most likely only a 50 watt is going to fit there but I'll carry this 100 watt just in case. And I have that MC4 connector back there now so I can change it as I need it. All right, you guys, hopefully that video was helpful for you. If you guys know of a solar panel that is not a portable one that will actually fit on my rifle box, leave a link down in the description for me. I've been looking for a while now and I can't find one. I definitely do want a permanently mounted one on that rifle box. It's unused space anyways, and so it'd be nice to have a 50 watt that's running all the time. And if I want the 100 watt, I can just disconnect that one and just run this one. So hopefully you guys found the video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button down below. If you guys are interested in any of the products or tools that I use, I'll leave some of them down below in the description. So make sure you check those out. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. I'll respond to them as soon as I can. But for now, I'm gonna go and enjoy this solar panel. And as always guys, have a nice day.